Am I the butthole for not paying for my neighbor's medication? I have get along just fine with neighbor F. She has always been friendly and we've hung out a few times. She is diabetic and takes medication for it. Today she needed her medication and didn't have the money to get it, so she texted me and asked if I don't mind paying for it. She never said she'd pay me back. I texted her back and told I don't have the money right now. She wanted to know if I could sell something that I own to get the money to pay for her medication. I told her I'm not going to do that. She thinks I'm being an ah because she needs her medication and she's always been nice to me. Edit, I'm not sure what medication she takes because she never told me. She texted me again, and she is pissed that I'm not going to pay for her medication, and she tried to guilt trip me. I told her, this isn't my problem. You can sell your stuff or try good RX or even talk to your doctor about a program that might help you, and I blocked her after that. I wasn't going to block her but she tried to guilt trip and make me feel obligated. She needs to be blocked. And why can't she sell something of hers to get the money for her medication? Totally not the butthole. I would have said no too. Diabetes can be really serious if not monitored properly. Why in hell would she let her medication lapse to the point of harassing her neighbors to sell their personal stuff so she can get it? Direct her to good RX and wish her good luck. Not the butthole there are two possibilities. One, she does not have the money for her medication and was desperate. Still not your obligation whatsoever to purchase the medicine for her or sell your personal items. 2. She has the money and is trying to scam you into paying. Neither possibility is your issue or your obligation to help just because you're friendly. Not the butthole, this is weird, your neighbor is ballsy demanding you sell stuff to get her medicine. Have you borrowed money from her before? Am I the butthole for telling my mom she has to accept that she can't make me feel a certain way and that her choices made while dating when I was a kid have implications for the future? My mom was a single mom from before I was born. I know of my biological father and his family. I know who they are and even confirmed at 19 through ancestry that they were my biological relatives but they don't want me and I don't want them. From a very young age I knew my mom dated a lot. She introduced me to almost every guy she was with. Some I would see twice at most and would hear from her that she loved them and wanted us to be a family and then they'd be gone. Others stuck around a little longer and a few of those were better to me than she was. They were kind, accepting of me being there and would make me smile. While mom always put the weight of her relationships on my shoulders and would tell me how I needed to behave and make a good impression and accept that I was getting a new daddy. It was not a very stable time for me. I struggled a lot. Some of her boyfriends I bonded really well with and was sad when they were gone, others I was glad to never see again and some I was truly indifferent toward. By the time I was 12 I was just over it and decided to just exist when she'd bring me around guys and think of other stuff and make plans with friends. Then when I was 15 she met the guy she married and married him after 6 months. By the time I met him I had a whole range of experiences with her guys and honestly, he was nowhere near the best. So I'm indifferent to him and I have no special bond with him. I don't consider him my father figure or parent. If I cut my mom out tomorrow or if she died, he would no longer be part of my life. My mom has had this expectation for me to accept him as my dad and embrace him into my life and it has been a problem for her that I was closer to some of her exes than her husband. It first really came up when I graduated high school and only listed her as a parent in the pamphlet thing they made and distributed to all the guests with our names and who our parents were. She brought it up a lot after that and then went on to complain when she found out I had one of her exes on my Facebook, who I reached out to to thank in my early 20s for being so good to me and were still friendly. When I told her recently I was getting married we argued. She told me how she couldn't wait to see me on her husband's arm, going down the aisle and I told her it wouldn't happen. We argued. She brought up yet again the fact there are exes of hers, that would have gotten the position, and that's really a maybe because I don't know for sure. I told her she cannot make me feel a certain way about her husband and she has to accept that by dating around so much and introducing me to so many guys, etc., had consequences and that one of those is some of them I liked more than her husband and by the time he came around I was already tired and not as open as before and that I had many people I could compare him against. She argued that I was being so unfair to her and had no idea how hard being a single parent is. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole her expectations are unrealistic. Humans need to make emotional bonds, they don't just become family. Not the butthole. It's ridiculous of her to imagine that, after all of that, you would immediately think of her most recent partner as your father. You sound as if you have dealt very well with a difficult situation when growing up. She now needs to accept that it's time for you to make your choices, just as she did. Am I the butthole for telling my in-laws that my husband would have married me regardless of their opinion? So I 31 female, and my husband, 41 male, have been married for 4 months, together 5 years. Though we live about 20 minutes from his parents and sister, I have met them 3 times. He has occasionally stopped by to help them dot with something, but he is not really close to them. Maybe a handful of phone calls and a few visit a year. 
We went by to have lunch with them last weekend and they were asking a ton of personal questions about me and I started to get uncomfortable. My husband told them to tone it down and their response was that they never got the chance to vet me before we got married, so they needed to do it now to make sure I was right for him. The way they said it rubbed me wrong way, so I said honestly, I don't care about your opinion of me, and I doubt, my husband, does either. He would have married me regardless of your feelings. They said I was rude and that family was important, and blamed me for isolating him from their family. So am I the butthole? Not the butthole. It's not much of a mystery why he isn't close to them. Not the butthole. Your in-laws hold on to outdated traditions and honestly, you only told them the truth. Am I the butthole for screaming obscenities at my husband after her blew the leaf blower at me? Today is the first anniversary of my, 35 female, mom's death. My mom died in a very unexpected and tragic way. Today is a very emotional day for me. My husband, 35 male, has always known about this day and we've talked about it several times, including last night and this morning. Around 10 a.m. today, my husband came inside the house. I was in the kitchen, washing dishes, when he started blowing the leaf blower on me. I'm naturally a very skittish person, I scare extremely easily and often scream aloud if someone sneaks up on me. When the leaf blower hit me from behind, I immediately turned around and yelled multiple obscenities at him. It startled me so bad that my chest literally hurt. He got upset said that he was just joking, and there was no way he could predict how I would respond. It's been a point of contention between us all day. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole and also WTF. Who even brings a leaf blower in the house in the first place? And on today of all days? My mom also died unexpectedly a little over a year ago, and my fiancé treated me kindly and carefully on the anniversary of her death. I am sorry your husband did not do the same, and I hope you were able to find a way to honor her memory. Not the butthole. Number one it's a really emotional day for you and rightfully so. My condolences, OP. Number two it's not even skittish to not expect someone to run into your house with a leaf blower. You are normal for being perturbed. Not the butthole. His prank wasn't funny. Am I the butthole for having my 15 year old Pomeranian stuffed and mounted after he died? If you have ever seen the movie The King's Men then you know what I mean. When my dog Franco passed away last year I made arrangements to get him taxidermied. I just got him back and he looks like he is just napping on the couch in my office. It took nearly 18 months to get him back. I have also gotten two Pomeranians since from a rescue group. Palms can be yappy little ankle biters and some people can't deal. But I love them. My new pups, Guido, and Vinny are good about leaving him alone after freaking out when he first came home. However, I did not think to mention what I did to my family. My brother and sister-in-law and their kids are visiting for Christmas. They are here from New Zealand so it is a long visit. The plan was for them to stay with me and my wife while they are in the city since we have the most room. They are also traveling to Disneyland and seeing more of California. Well the problem came today. They had been gone for a few days and when they came home I was busy working in my office. I work from home but I work for myself so I told them if they needed me they could knock and I would tell them if it was okay to come in. My sill knocked and I told her to come in. She tried to shoo Franco off the couch. I was busy and didn't notice until she screamed and ran out of the room. Everyone noticed then. Me, my wife, my parents, my brother, her kids. Everyone came running to see what happened. She was sitting on the stairs crying. Apparently she peed herself a little because she thought one of my other dogs had died on the couch. I explained to everyone, except my wife who already knew, that I had a stuffed dog in my office. My nieces think it's cool, but they think of me as the crazy aunt anyways. But my parents and my brother are taking her side. They are saying I'm weird for doing that to my dog and that I am in butthole who should have warned everyone. My brother and sister-in-law want to go stay at a hotel. They expect me to pitch in since it is my fault for scaring the pee out of her. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. It's not like you did this on purpose, even though it is absolutely hilarious, and they need to just calm down. A taxidermy dog that gave someone a jump scare is not a reason to stay at a hotel, especially since the kids don't seem to mind, and expecting you to help pay for their choice to do so is ridiculous. Maybe a compromise could be to apologize for not letting them know about it ahead of time and offer to put Franco up somewhere where they won't have to see him? Regardless this is the funniest thing I've seen on this subreddit and it brightened up my morning. Not the butthole. Had to get that out of the way before saying that YTA for posting this because now I peed myself a little. Not from fright. From laughing. This is the funniest thing I have ever read on this sub. Maybe get a little plaque or something to let people know Franco isn't with you anymore. Also. Dog tax please. Not the butthole. Weird, yes. Butthole, no. I can't believe they asked you to help pay for a hotel. They need to chill out a bit.
I'm sure everyone will be laughing about this in a couple of days. Not the butthole. What Syl thought she found was definitely worth getting distraught over, but her reaction was a little excessive. That said, I think it's perfectly reasonable to not think to mention by the way, I taxidermied my dog especially if he's taking his final snooze in an office or room that doesn't sound like a common area. If they hadn't overreacted, I'd say this was a NAH situation. As it is though I'd say they're the butthole. Your sill may be embarrassed but she needs to take a leaf out of Franco's book and calm down and nap it off. You would not be at all out of line for refusing to pay for a hotel room for them. Am I the butthole for what I said to my girlfriend? Me, 24 male, and my girlfriend, 22 female, have been together for almost 3 years. In a few days a friend of mine, Maisie, 24F, is going to have a dance show with a group of friends of her dance studio and she invited all of our friend group to go see the show and some of the rehearsals to give them our inputs. I invited my girlfriend over. Yesterday was one of the last rehearsals and my friends, me and my girlfriend were there to watch. Maisie is hot as frick and I won't deny that, and yesterday she was showing off a bit of sexier moves in her number. By the end of the practice, my girlfriend shouted something like I would smash you anytime if you wanted to, and everyone laughed if off. Maisie asked me if I didn't mind my girlfriend hitting on her right in front of me and I replied hell no, I'm with her because you didn't want to smash me anytime too and everyone laughed it off as well. See, this was in the middle of her practice and it was no way meant in a harmful way the same way what she said was nothing but a joke. Everyone laughed, everyone didn't give a second thought about any of that exchange of words. But, after I was home, my girlfriend called me furious slash devastated saying that I implied she was some consolation prize because Maisie didn't want me before and in front of everyone no less. I explained that it was as much of a joke as what she said but she said that no, it wasn't because I know she is straight and would never smash any girl and I replied that she should know that I wouldn't smash any girl either because I'm with her. This rant went on night ahead and she said that I was feeding her insecurities and jealousy over Maisie, when I kept insisting it was just a stupid joke that she had started. She was completely monosyllabic with me today and it seems that we are in cold terms. Am I the butthole? Edit, bear with me now. Unlike every freaking one says, I actually accept the consensus and I get I am the butthole. After I posted here and the first comments appeared I talked to Maisie. To the ones who were concerned, no, Maisie didn't mind the jokes, but I thought it's cute how some of y'all worried about her. She said she wouldn't be offended but could see where my girlfriend was coming from and suggested me in conversation in person. Well enough, I tried calling my girlfriend, she didn't pick up, and I left a message that I'll paste in here. I am astronomically sorry about all this mess. I know I've been the most dumb and stupid guy since yesterday for not addressing this whole situation properly since yesterday, but listen now. I am really really sorry for hurting you, my love. And believe when I say that there is no woman in this world that I would stop me from being with you. You're absolutely the most gorgeous, finest and adorable person I have ever even dreamt about knowing and you just can't imagine how in love I am with you. Whenever you feel comfortable to talk to me again, I will be right here, you just need to call. If any of you it's actually interested in my relationship I could give an update when slash if she answer me. Now, let me address some things. 1. I responded to literally 4 comments right in the second I posted it, it does not mean I didn't accept your judgment or I didn't want your opinions or, as stated, that all I wanted was to gather affirmations to throw at my girlfriend's face. I literally just answered to first comments that showed up. 2. I do not want to frick with Maisie. I did not try to frick with Maisie. As I said countless times, greater than greater than it was a joke, it was not true less than less than. I see that it was a stupid joke and that it hurt my girlfriend and I am sorry about what I said now. But no, no, there is no truth in what I said and just don't know where in my post I ever stated that that was what I actually wanted. 3. Some of y'all are just literally so pressed about the fact that I stated that Maisie was hot. She is hot. Everyone knows that I know that, my girlfriend knows that, Maisie knows that, everyone who sees Maisie knows that. And, surprise, I can find girls hot without wanting to frick them, as it has been for fricking 12 years. 4. Thank you all for the ones hoping my girlfriend dumps me, I hope it goes back to you in some point. 5. Thank you for the ones who made me laugh in here. So needed. 6. Thank you for the ones who were actually helpful and not just throwing offenses at me. I also hope it goes back to you in some point. Yes you're the butthole, swap the roles, hot dancer, shows off, you say that he says it back and your gf replies, she is only with you because she didn't get to frick him. That hurts. A lot. You should apologize to your gf. Tell her you got carried away in the joke and didn't realize how hurtful it was and you're sorry. I personally wouldn't want to continue a relationship if I was the second option for my so. Are you kidding me? You're the butthole. You said, in front of your girlfriend and many other people, that the only reason you were with your current gf is bc your friend wouldn't frick you. It doesn't matter if everyone else laughed it off, what you said was crafty and you know it. 
Edit, you're double the butthole because you went to the woman who is not your girlfriend first and for proving in the comments and edits that you do not know why you fricked up. You're the huge, huge A. You're the butthole Uta you're the butthole. You essentially told your girlfriend you'd rather be with Maisie. Even if it is a joke, and it sounds like it's true, based on your post, it's a really nasty one. At least your girlfriend's joke was clearly a joke as it came from a straight woman. She deserves so much better. You're the butthole. Maisie is hot as frick and I won't deny that, and yesterday she was showing off a bit of sexier moves in her number. And you wonder why your girlfriend, or future ex, is pissed at you? You openly admitted you think she's hot as frick, and the fact that you tried to hook with her before multiple times and she shot you down, and think it's cool to crack a joke in front of everyone, including your current girlfriend, about this. Hey if I can't get you myself I will do it through my girlfriend. If this isn't a troll posting, my word, you are disgusting and I hope your girlfriend has enough sense to break it off with you. You can't claim to be in a loving relationship with someone while publicly declaring your lust for another girl and get to act all shocked when the girlfriend gets angry with you. Edit hey OP. You're still the a-hole, you argued in the comments until you realized how bad you messed up, and you posted your apology call? Where in that apology did you actually apologize for what you said? You still won't admit you were wrong for what you said your love bombing your girl and hoping she takes that for an apology instead of showing her you actually figured out what and why you said was so wrong. You then doubled down again in your edit that you can say what you said? And yes I am one of the ones who said I hope she dumps you. She's wasting her time with someone to self-involved, you don't even want to learn and figure out what you did wrong, you just want to sweep it under the rug and go back to the way things were. And it doesn't matter if you want to have sex with your friend now. It mattered when you made that comment and you put out that perspective, there isn't a way to magically take that back. You said it OP and you wrote it on here too. Am I the butthole dipping out on my friend's bachelorette weekend because I was fed up with another bridesmaid? Nina and I, both 31, have been friends since the beginning of college. Laura and Nina met at their church when Laura moved to the area and ever since then Nina's integrated her into our friend group. Laura is not a terrible person but she's exhausting for me to be around to the point I don't have the whole friend group at my place if Laura is going to be there. I've tried having her over with the others twice the first time she got bent out of shape over my boyfriend watching an action movie in the living room and that was too intense for her to hear and the second time she flipped out over my Jason bus to the point she cried and had to leave. If she's not doing stuff like that then she's the sort that has to bring up God and Jesus whenever someone talks about something going on in their life. It's not even that she's religious because all of us have some type of faith to a degree, but we all keep it to ourselves. I've talked to Nina about all of this before and said she'd talk to her. Vailp. Nina is getting married and she asked all four of us to be her bridesmaids. I figured I could put up with Laura for one day and small windows of time doing bridesmaid stuff for Nina's sake. It was going well until Nina suggested we go away for a bachelorette weekend. She wanted us to arrive at our destination Thursday afternoon, and spend Friday, Saturday, and most of Sunday there. Nothing fancy just going to one of the metro areas to hang out. We meet up Thursday afternoon at the hotel and I'm wearing a hoodie my boyfriend bought me for my b-day. Laura goes right into how the picture on it is evil and I should be wary about wearing evil imagery. I ignore it. For dinner, we go to get hibachi and some of us ordered sushi rolls to go with dinner. We offered Laura some and it was a 5 minute rant about how sushi isn't for her. She had something negative to say about just about every part of the meal. At that point I knew I couldn't last a weekend without snapping so I waited until an hour or so after dinner and said I felt really sick and was just going to go home. I thought that would be better than making a scene over Laura. Yesterday my boyfriend and I spent the day out. The other bridesmaid posted up some pics of their day and tagged me in it saying they wished I was there and to feel better. Someone commented that I didn't look sick when they saw me leaving a store. One called me right after to see what was up and I told her the truth I couldn't handle Laura and didn't want to make a scene over it. But it turned into a whole thing anyway with them mad that I didn't just put on a happy face for Nina's sake to suck it up and I ruined their weekend after they told Nina the truth. I thought it was better for me to just leave because I know myself and I wouldn't be able to be fake it for three days straight. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. You were trying to have class and grace and not make a scene and not make someone feel bad. However, I would consider talking to Nina again about this. It seems Laura is doing more than just being annoying, she's directly criticizing you, the hoodie, and she's also being toxic for the group by ruining the events, complaining throughout the meal. I wouldn't want to put up with her for 5 minutes, let alone a whole day and then some. ETA, the only part where you went wrong was lying and then being caught. You shouldn't have lied, because now you friend the bride may have a different opinion of you. But I can see how you were trying your best. Not the butthole. Too bad social media keeps everyone's lives intertwined into everyone else's. You can't go out without being seen and tagged and your white lie outed. You were trying to make your friend's weekend nicer by not telling her rude friend to shut the hell up about herself and her opinions. You did the right thing. 
Does Nina see how her friend is so rude? Am I the butthole for getting our nieces slash nephews cheap Christmas gifts when we can afford more? Normally our nieces and nephews on my so's side of the family get tons of things for Christmas. They are already well off and have every toy imaginable. Christmas ends up being even more from their aunts and uncles and grandparents. Last year we spent $800 on just her side of the family with each kid getting a nice $1.50 plus gift. And we don't have kids, but still participate in giving each kid something. However there is always a pattern of them not appreciating it. Last year they opened up our gift and literally tossed it aside. But their parents just say oh they are just kids, what do you want a thank you note ha ha ha. Compare that to our other niece whom got a gift she already had, and she still thanked us and was excited. This year my so's sister, the parents of kids, has gone on and on about how. This year Christmas is all about the kids, instead of normal gifts I'm asking for you all to get them experiences. Take them to a dolphin show, go get a pedicure, a concert, shopping, tour, zoo passes, etc. This pissed my so off due to them not appreciating anything in the past. When we take them places they complain, they aren't grateful and it's money wasted. On top of that, it's not our job to be parents of their kids. Most of all they are never grateful. E at Thanksgiving I made homemade mac and cheese and stressed over it being perfect. When asked how it was, my niece stuck her nose up at it and said it's weird and her mom laughed it off and I had to just make a light-hearted comment about sorry it's not craft haha to shrug it off. TLDR. Therefore. We are done with going all out. Dollar tree gifts and coloring books and candy since they don't appreciate anything. Are we the butthole? Not the butthole. And she's asking for even more expensive gifts this year? Although it would be funny if you accommodated her demands to the letter with something free slash cheap. Such as, a day in the park and a picnic. Build a snowman, or sandcastle, and have hot chocolate, or lemonade. Story hour at the library. Craft day at your house with grilled cheese. Scavenger hunt in your neighborhood. Matinee and popcorn. Or even better, volunteer at a soup kitchen to learn some dang gratitude. That'd be an experience they'd never forget. Nta but don't take offense to not beating craft, it's like crack to kids. Am I the butthole for telling my mill she didn't actually attend our wedding? My husband 37 male, has a challenging relationship with his mom. She was very neglectful to my husband and his siblings when they were kids, and now only contacts him to ask for money. She doesn't work and refuses to submit paperwork to get on disability despite us offering to hire a lawyer to help her. She lives off money she gets from various family members, or to complain about his siblings and ask him to parent them for her. My parents paid for most of our wedding, with my husband and I paying for a couple vendors. My mom absolutely loves party planning slash hosting so we had a fairly significant budget. His mom had nothing to do with planning. I wanted to find ways to include her, so I asked if she wanted to join us for hair and makeup before the ceremony. She agreed, so I booked for that many people. Two weeks before the wedding, she decided that she didn't want to do hair and makeup after all. At that point it was too late to cancel her service, but the wife of one of the groomsmen was able to join us and get hers done instead. Two days before the wedding, his mom called and announced that she wasn't sure she was going to be attending the wedding because her hair was a mess. I again offered her the hair and makeup services, but she refused. She decided that evening that she would attend the wedding after all. The morning of our wedding my husband spoke with his mother, who said she was coming with his brother and repeated the time for the ceremony to him. Fifteen minutes before I was supposed to walk down the aisle, my wedding planner came up to my getting ready room and announced that his mother wasn't going to be there in time for the ceremony. She had already spoken with my husband, who decided to go ahead without her. Mill showed twenty minutes after the ceremony, just in time to be in pictures and enjoy the reception. It's worth noting she spent the weeks before our wedding posting on Facebook about so excited for the wedding at fancy venue we're having fancy food for dinner at fancy venue going to have the best time because fancy venue has the kind of fancy food and drinks that I like. I just brushed everything off because I let my husband take the lead with his mom, and just follow along with how he likes to handle her, which is typically to ignore her. At his extended family Thanksgiving, his mom started bragging about how incredible our wedding was, our wedding was very small, only about 65 people, so most of his extended family wasn't there, and just going on and on and on about how fancy it was, and how it was so beautiful. I'd had enough and snapped that she wouldn't know because she didn't actually attend the wedding itself, only the reception. She wasn't thrilled with that, and Thanksgiving kind of blew up. She's been blowing up my husband's phone, although he's ignoring her until she calms down. It wasn't my best moment, but I'd had it listening to her brag about a wedding she had nothing to do with and didn't really attend. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole she needed to hear the truth. Her behavior sounds very challenging to deal with. Is she being treated for it? Not the butthole and I would love to buy your husband a beer. Not the butthole for keeping it real.
She was whipsawing you guys right up to the wedding, which she missed. She doesn't deserve any recognition for actually having attended it. Not the butthole. You didn't lie. She was the one who brought it up. Am I the butthole for looking into professional babysitter for my child? I have a daughter who is roughly one year old. Her name is Allison. Her dad and I both work full-time jobs, where I work between 35 to 40 hours a week and he works anywhere between 40 to 45 hours. We both work mornings. My friends Tom, 23 male, and Skylar, 24 female had volunteered to watch Allison for us as Tom worked from home and Allison isn't known to cry very often. At first it was going great. Tom would have Allison in a separate and baby-proofed room where she could play with her toys while he worked. Then Skylar would take over when she came home. We offered pay many times but they kept refusing. And Skylar would ask us to bring Allison over if it had been a while since we asked her to help with babysitting. Finally we agreed to them having Allison three days a week but the maid has promised to stop offering to pay them. It was great for a while. It really worked out. But then Allison started coming home with rashes from stale diapers. She'd be extremely fussy and hungry by the time we got home. We would talk to Tom and Skylar about this and request they were more observant of her diapers at the very least. Her thrashing and screaming because diaper ointment hurt broke my heart every time. Especially since I knew it was avoidable. They'd say yes, but after a while would go back. They have recently started lying to get out of our arraignment. Claiming to be out of town for the week, then Snapchat us them being at home with their birds. Claim they were sick but our mutual friends would still be hanging out. And claiming that they wouldn't be at home all week for work, when Tom works strictly from home. His job doesn't even have a main office. Without them knowing, we registered Allison with a professional daycare service. I drop her off in the morning and her dad picks her up. Word got to Skylar and Tom and now they're blowing up our phones calling us evil, shifty, and rude for not telling them they wouldn't have Allison anymore. And claiming I betrayed their trust by not talking to them about my concerns. Am I the butthole for finding a daycare for Allison? Not the butthole and am I the only one to smell a rat here? They refused payment, odd for so much time dedicated and you know that they at least neglected your child's health and needs whilst in their care, which is enough reason to stop them from looking after her. I'm concerned that they'd been so upset about professional day care. OP, I'd be keeping an extra close eye and only supervised visits if any at all from here on in, something doesn't seem right to me. Not the butthole my mind went to a very dark place, because people don't do things that are labor intensive for free. Hopefully your kid hasn't been harmed or on the internet somewhere on the dark web. Not the butthole and you should have found a daycare for her the second you realized she wasn't being changed or fed. I am curious why they weren't charging or accepting money though. Am I the butthole for telling my best friend and her fiancé they can't stay with me for three weeks? My, 24 female, best friend of 16 years, Kate, 26 female, and her fiancé Chris, 28 male, planned to stay with me and my partner over Christmas. She made arrangements and booked flights a few months ago and we discussed it in passing over video call. During a recent visit, the day before she returned home, she mentioned that she was staying for three weeks. I was taken aback by this, I thought it would only be 1.5 to 2 weeks. I don't doubt that she had told me the dates, but I'm sure I would have remembered if she had said 3 weeks. That's a long time to expect to stay with someone. I discussed this with my partner and we both concluded 3 weeks is too long. Christmas is a stressful time, we have family visiting from another city and overseas, and Kate and Chris have no transport so therefore rely on us to drive them places. We also have a very skittish and anxious cat who is usually allowed outside, but the vet advised us to keep him inside in case he runs away. Three weeks is a long time for him to be hiding under the bed. I decided to send Kate a message, 17th November, asking if she was going to stay with her family at all over Christmas. I explained that three weeks is a long time, I'm totally happy if she stays for part of the time, and I hoped we could figure something out. I apologized and said that there must have been some sort of miscommunication. What followed was messages back and forth about how I fricked her over, ruined her plans, don't care about her, and wouldn't do the same for her as she would for me. She called me in butthole, a piece of crap, and said I had the flight details and that she wasn't going to hold my hand and explain it to me like a child. She said I was acting oblivious and was well aware of how long they were staying, and that we talked about the dates multiple times. She'll have to spend her first Christmas back in her home country alone. Problem is, looking back, I did have a screenshot of the flight details and she was here for exactly 14 days. Except, she said she was telling people three weeks because it was easier than saying two weeks and a few days. But it was 14 days. Why would she tell me three weeks and also not correct me after the first message? Two weeks would have been perfectly fine, I only brought it up because I thought she was staying for three weeks, and now it has ruined a 16 year long friendship. I feel awful about this whole thing. When she said three weeks, I panicked and didn't think to double check the dates. 
Now I have to grieve the loss of a friend who thinks I'm selfish and careless. Not the butthole, it sounds like a misunderstanding and Kate went over the top. I'm failing to see what you've done wrong. Not the butthole. Your friend sounds so exhausting. Cancel any plans and think about this friendship. I'm not sure I understand completely. Was the initial and official plan, and the flight details she sent you, 14 days? Then not the butthole. She changed it without telling you and that's completely out of line. If you had the dates, and they were for three weeks, then you were careless and that wouldn't be cool. Then again, you're allowed to change your mind and she would just have to accept that. Whatever the situation was, she overreacted. Insanely. Is there something else going on with her maybe? Not the butthole. You had her flight details. Details said two weeks. 14 days. Not three weeks. You're entitled to having your home and you actually gently probed on whether or not she was staying elsewhere when you questioned it. Where did the other week come into factor? To me, and my personal opinion, is she's using you as a free vacation resort and when you didn't just lie down and allow her to do it, she showed her true colors, yes even after 16 years. You didn't ruin anything, she ruined it by feeling entitled to your time and your home during a busy season generally for everyone. You're not selfish and careless. Selfish and careless would have told her that she had to find a hotel room during her 14-day visit, instead you offered her your home. You did nothing wrong. She imploded your friendship on her own terms. Am I the butthole for not listening to my dad and stepmom? I, 24 female, recently went home to my dad's house to visit him, my stepmom, and two sisters. One night my dad and stepmom Ubered into town to go bar hoping. They asked if I could pick them up with my stepmom's car when they were done, which I reluctantly agreed to. About 10 p.m. that night, after roughly 5 hours of them drinking, my dad texts me so I head out to pick them up. I pull into the back parking lot of the bar they were at only for them to start yelling at me that I should have just picked them up out front, there was no space to pull up so I'd be blocking traffic if I did this. Then the whole time we're driving home, stepmom starts screaming at me to slow down and stop speeding even though I'm well within the speed limit. She then keeps yelling at me to stop accelerating, but my foot is nowhere near the accelerator and we are driving downhill, and I tried to stand my ground by telling her this. My dad chimes in and scolds me that if I were to crash their car he'd ask my mom to pay half for a replacement. They continued to scream at me the rest of the way home, so once we got back I parked in the driveway and ran upstairs to collect myself and cry it out. I could hear stepmom slamming doors and running around the upstairs looking for me to get her I'm right. Validation that she usually tries to get when she's clearly in the wrong. The next day my dad tries to reassure me she was only trying to keep me safe on the road and that he sees young kids getting hurt slash killed in accidents all of the time with his job. I just brushed it off as I knew they were clearly too drunk to make proper judgment of my driving, but Vita for how I responded to the situation? Not the butthole. I'm surprised that you didn't pack upon getting to your room and then leave, first thing in the morning. Their screaming at you was little more than abusive. Instead of apologizing for their drunken tirade, your father is topping things off by gaslighting you. Only you can decide not to tolerate this. Not the butthole, let them pay for an Uber next time. Not the butthole, and yikes, your parents are not happy drunks. I'm also. Okay. I hope someone else will weigh in, because I grew up in a house where my parents would never have gone to a bar, let alone drank for 5 hours and asked me to be their ride home. I, personally, feel like your dad and stepmom might have a drinking problem, but my personal experience is too skewed for me to know. Not the butthole. My dad did this to me once. We drove the entire way home at 5 miles per hour. You know, just to be safe. When he told me to stop being silly, I was all no, you're right, it's important I drive safely and he was just seething. Internally, instead of getting annoyed at him and upset, I was laughing my tits off. I am petty as frick with that crap. Am I the butthole for telling my sister she can't cook in my house and not begging her to stay after she threatened to leave? Today we were hosting a Christmas lunch at our house. Both, my husband and I our parents were coming over and my siblings. This was more so informal hosting, my mom was bringing lunch and we were providing dessert and coffee. I've had a very hard week and my sister, Sam, is well aware of this and I asked her if we should just have the lunch at my parents' house. Truly because I hate having people over when my house isn't impeccably clean and I didn't have the time to clean on Friday. Sam said no she'd rather be at my house. So Sam and my other sister, Trish, came over to sleep over Friday night. We all went out for a late late dinner and got back to our house around 1am. Trish and I wanted to stay up and watch a movie even though it was late. Trish doesn't come up as often as Sam, so it was nice to make some hot chocolate and hang out. I asked my sisters before we went to bed if they could help me clean the house on Saturday before lunch. Sam was super annoyed. I told her that I offered to go to my parents' house so I don't have to ask for help to clean. She said she didn't know that's why I was suggesting it and would have said yes if she knew why. 
Since Sam was annoyed I decided to clean what I can at night, this was like 2 a.m., Sam texts Trish that we are making too much noise and she can't sleep. All I did was put dishes in the dishwasher. In the morning we all woke up pretty late and I got to cleaning and didn't ask anyone for help. While I was cleaning, Sam wakes up and goes to make breakfast. I kindly asked her not to cook as I've already cleaned the kitchen and didn't have time to clean up after her. Sam got mad at me and snapped and said I'm being ridiculous. So I left the room and she came upstairs mad and stomping everywhere so I angrily said if you are going to cook then clean up after yourself. She goes um you are impossible I'm going to leave if you continue. I said okay then leave. Who's stopping you? She packed up her bag and left in her PJs. My mill said I should have just told her to stay and made amends but I said I'm tired of her behavior and her being so rude. If she wants to leave she's free to go. My parents thought my sister was being dramatic but I could have asked her to stay. Couple of notes. Sam comes over often and she has a key to our house. She's free to make food usually and do whatever. She uses our house as an escape. She makes a mess but it usually. Had Sam woken up earlier and cooked I wouldn't have had a problem. She woke up an hour before everyone was coming and also didn't want to help in any way to get the house ready. My husband was going to go out to get breakfast, he just had to take care of the dogs first but she didn't want to eat out because she's on a new health kick. So am I the butthole? Edited, edited letters to names. Edited to add. Sam is 23, Trish is 22. I'm 29. Another edit, thank you everyone for your feedback. I will be changing the locks. Sam is not welcome in my house anymore to sleep over. She can come when there is a gathering, but I will not be allowing her to sleep over. I'm drawing a strict boundary with her and keeping her at an arm's length. Not the butthole. Read the footnotes and considering she can't help out with cleaning the house nor does she want to eat out or clean up after herself I don't think you should have asked her to stay. Not the butthole especially with those added details. She seems a but entitled to me. Am I the butthole for asking a friend to bring a vegan dessert to a Christmas dinner party? I have invited about 10 friends over for a Christmas dinner next week. I love to host and love to cook, but it is a bit stressful given the amount of people coming. One of my good friends who I invited is vegan. I find them hard to cater for because in addition to this, they are a very picky eater, for example they don't like most vegetables that are common substitutes in vegan meals. I have hosted them many many times over the years, but 90% of the time they critique the food I make. I find this frustrating and rude as I always have to make their food in addition to the rest, which adds a lot more work. On top of this, my friend is one of those people who never brings something to contribute when they are invited over somewhere, while other guests do. I don't expect people to bring snacks or drinks over, but given the circumstances you would think they might consider bringing something along. Since I am a little stressed about this dinner, doing a whole turkey, sides, dessert, drinks, and suitable vegan options, I asked my friend if they would be able to bring a vegan dessert, one other guest would also need a dairy-free dessert. My friend got angry at me and said I was rude for asking them to make a dessert for a party when I am the one hosting and I haven't specifically asked others to bring food. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Your vegan friend sounds like a giant entitled butthole. Probably everyone within shouting distance knows this at all times. I would uninvite them. I have hosted them many many times over the years, but 90% of the time they critique the food I make. You need to stop hosting this person and give them their just desserts. Not the butthole. Not the butthole. I've been vegan for 5 years. At events like this I have zero expectation for people to cater to my specific needs. If I want something specific, I'll make it and bring it myself. Criticizing the vegan food that someone makes for me would not only be in butthole move, but it's straight up just bad veganism in my humble opinion. The fact that your friend is throwing down on this is pretty crafty. You did nothing unreasonable. Not the butthole. Honestly, your friend sounds exhausting, entitled, and more effort than their company is worth. I'd be rethinking inviting them next year. Am I the butthole for preventing my sister from being scammed by this guy online by telling on her to bro and mom? My sister, 20 female, confided in me, 19 female, that the guy she's seeing online is about to get kicked out of the house by his parents and has nowhere to go and she'll be helping him with money from the college fund our mom had set up for her. I was instantly alarmed as this is a common scam and even if it wasn't, this guy being kicked out of his parents' house is still concerning about his character, especially since they never even met in real life. I failed to convince her not to do it and begged her to at least let me tag along from afar when she withdraws the money and goes to meet him. She said yes. But, when we went to the bank, she actually made a request for $6,000. I was shocked and kept hysterically begging her not to do this. She was carrying 6k all in cash and going to meet this guy. She got tired of me pushing and yelled at me to leave her alone and that she changed her mind about me tagging along. She then just went ahead and hailed a taxi, I hurriedly went and blocked the door and begged the taxi driver to also take me with her, 
I told him she was irrational and didn't know what she was doing. I ended up going into the taxi with her. On the way there, I called my bro and mom and told them what's going on. My bro said he was coming and I shared our live location with him. My sister was absolutely mad and said I was horrible for doing this to her when I know how much she hates both mom and bro and doesn't trust them. She also said I had no right to interfere even if she was scammed or harmed. She then stopped the taxi and ran out and growled at me not to follow. I ignored her and kept following when my bro and his car honked at us. We both turned back and when I looked back again, my sister had started running while he got down from the car and we both chased after her. In the end, we caught up. My bro told her he'll be following her all the time until he sees this guy and he will get him to back off. My sister just broke down in tears called us all freaking nuts. That she won't be going anywhere and to just leave her alone. We insisted she comes home right away which she did. She went to her room and slammed the door at my face and wouldn't talk to me ever since. My mom said she will understand in time when she matures how big of a favor I did her and not to worry. But her reaction still ate at me and I'm not sure if I really did the right thing. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. You are right, this was 110% a scam. Hopefully she will realize someday that you did her a favor. It might take a while, though. Not the butthole. I am sure your parents set that money up to be used for college, not to give to a guy. I am up for learning mistakes on your own. But that's a big mistake. I think you made the right choice. Am I the butthole for telling my friend who has cancer that she's living a lie even though she was happy? To give some background, Sarah, not her real name, is my childhood friend. We've been best friends for over 16 years, and she means the world to me. Since I'm not an extroverted person, the people I know are mostly the people I met through Sarah. Sadly, she's been battling cancer for the last three years and undergoing chemotherapy for it. She met her boyfriend on a dating app, soon became close and started dating. Me and Sarah's other friends had never liked him since we first met him. I'm sure at least some of y'all have seen the cartoon Courage the Cowardly Dog before. I was getting the same creepy vibes I got from the old man there. I'm not joking. Nevertheless, my friend was happier than ever, and I didn't want to spoil her happiness because I knew the difficulties she was going through. Anyway, some time ago, she was hospitalized because her condition suddenly worsened. In the beginning, her boyfriend often stopped by and brought her flowers. But after a while, his visits began to become infrequent. Eventually, he started visiting once a week. I know the whole process because I was always with her. I slept next to her in the hospital several times a week. Her parents came to visit her whenever they could but couldn't stay with her all the time since they both had 9 to 5 jobs. I often missed events at work slash school but didn't care. I didn't want her to feel alone. She helped me through my worst times, if you look at my first post which is about crying, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I knew that no matter what I did, I wouldn't be able to help her as much as she did. The best I could do was not to make her feel lonely. I couldn't relieve her pain, but at least I could make her smile. Weeks passed, and we found out that Sarah's boyfriend was cheating on her with multiple girls. He also made an inappropriate request to a girl from Sarah's friend group. Then, even though he knew I was staying with Sarah, he started messaging me from my social media accounts, making inappropriate comments. When I snapped back at him and got into an argument about how he was so inconsiderate and selfish for doing this to Sarah, he told me that I was a miserable girl with daddy issues and no one would believe me even if I told them about this because I was an effing psycho anyway. Well, that hurt. I knew he was saying that just to be mean, but I also knew it was true. Yet I didn't want to make the whole thing about myself, so I didn't say anything not to cause any more drama. Later on, without discussing this with any of her friends, I told Sarah about the whole thing because I didn't want her to live a lie. She deserved to know the truth. But now everyone's mad at me and doesn't talk to me, including her family members, because I took her only happiness away from her. I don't know what to do or what to say. If you're still reading this, thank you. Am I the butthole? He is the butthole, not you. Your situation sucked but if she had found out later that you knew it would have been a lot worse for her. Sounds like she doesn't need idiots like him when she has friends like you looking after her. I'm going with not the butthole, I would want to know. I'd rather not live a lie personally. Even when I was going through treatment I'd have been hurt and upset if everyone knew and let me continue to be lied to and made to look foolish. She might not appreciate it now but in time maybe she will. Continue being a great supportive friend. Not the butthole. I can't imagine a crappier situation. Setting aside my personal beliefs that someone's happiness should never solely rely on a partner, it is obvious her happiness with him was on a limited time frame. She was most likely going to find out about his infidelity sooner or later. Just imagine the feeling of betrayal she'd have if she found out that not only was her boyfriend cheating on her, but her friends were as some of his targets and never said anything. The way people treat terminally ill people is downright dehumanizing sometimes. People would rather the individual be disrespected in order to maintain a false sense of comfort. 
you were the only one who treated Sarah with respect, honesty, and humanity. To bring you some comfort after her loved one's cruel words, it's very evident you and Sarah are close and your support of her is far more valuable than some of Hat's fake love. I would argue you bring her just as much happiness through your constant support. Not the butthole, it's an impossible situation to be in, cause either way, you're going to end up the bad guy. But you did it because you clearly love her and care about her, as shown through your dedication to supporting her through her illness.